Hey, this is Lux. Uh, Regroover 1.7 is the latest version. So I'm gonna go over that with you real quick and do me a favor if you would subscribe. That lets me know that there is an audience so I can make more of these videos. So let's take a peek and hopefully you'll find something useful. All right, so we're here with Regroover 1.7. And I think the last time I did a video was uh, a few versions back. So a lot's changed. One I was excited about here is the fact that it's now synced to host. Uh, before you'd hit this play button and try to hit your space bar and it would start playing again and it was just a, a mess. But now it works perfectly with your host. Push play. Wherever you are on your timeline is where Regroover will be on its. And that's awesome. All right, so I'm going to drag a 85 beat per minute loop into Regroover because this is something I just want to make sure I cover. As you'll see, Regroover sees this as 170 beats per minute, so it's going to play it really slow. <laughs> so the solution is to hit that little divide by two, and now we have a proper loop playing as it should. Okay, now this has been here for a while, but it's the grid. Uh, I just want to go over it again because I want to make sure I uh, drive home that there's just so much more to this than meets the eye, said the transformer. Um, in this case, you see I'm not following the grid 4-4. I'm not paying attention to that at all. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I just go random. I pick uh, little slots here and there based on the transients and see what comes out of it. And as you can hear here, I've got a really cool snare going on uh, simply because uh, I found the, the sweet spot. Now I'm going to do this with the hi-hat. And I'll use these uh, loop brackets and pick another spot here. Let's do this. All right, now we'll probably just, uh, maybe I'll leave the kick alone. Okay, and by far the best feature of this release is the drag and drop audio. So now I can pull whatever we build in Regroover out and drop it onto a track. Uh, that's something, of course, you could do with Machine and some other programs, but it's definitely welcome. Changes uh, a lot of uh, the workflow. So in addition, of course, to pulling out the layers that we have active is that you can, as you'd expect, go through, find a layer, in this case, a kick drum. We can drag that out. All right, and let's just take a listen and see how that turned out. Now, this is also great for layering. So some of these things, you know, with the artifacts, they're there and that's okay, but they might be wonderful support for other things in the project. So just think of it that way. Sometimes the artifacts disappear. So yeah, another great opportunity. This clip happens to just be perfect. The kick drum's brought right out of it. And adding some effects, gonna squash the living hell out of it. But just as an example, when I pull that out, the effects that I just added are part of the clip now. So again, be mindful of that. You have the opportunity to just drag in the length of the clip or one bar up to eight bars. So once you've made the choice, just drag it up into your onto the track and you're good to go. So another addition that they've added is mid-side processing to each of the layers, which is gonna give you a lot of control. So yeah, and so if you know me by now, I don't always like to put drum loops into Regroover. There's opportunities with virtually anything. Sequences and arpeggiators are pretty dang cool. So mid-side is not to be confused with mono stereo. So this isn't like before where you had a mono switch and it turned that track to mono. If you bring uh, or turn the dial over to mids, you are not making that track mono. You're just revealing the mid information or the mono information. So the sides, as you can hear, this is kind of where the stereo lives. And then mid is where the mid lives, but they're independent of each other in this situation. So this isn't widening the audio, it's just isolating the parts. So you're not making it, you're just revealing mono and stereo. So worth looking into. So I'm just gonna go through here and turn these dials back and forth a little bit and you can hear the difference. 
So that's the uh, side information. And what you can do on these layers is, say, drag a few of them more or all the way over to the side and then pull some others to the mid just to get an entirely different sound out of the clip, which is kind of cool. I'm kind of glad they didn't go with just pure mono. However, I don't know how you would reproduce that anymore in this situation like you could before with just the mono switch. So I'm not sure if removing that entirely was uh, was the a, a great option, but this is something cool to play with. So messing with the effects, we have uh, the auto gain and the compressor. I'm gonna use saturation, drive it a little bit. Mess around with the transients. There's no method to this madness right now. It's just more for you to hear how you can potentially take a loop you haven't heard before <laughs> and uh, mess around with it for a bit and have something somewhat usable. So if there was thought put into this, I promise you, uh, you'd have some uh, really great results. But this is more of a proof of concept, if nothing else. All right. Well, the final thing I want to show you is going back to the drag and drop of I showed you a bit ago. So here's another instrument sequence clip. And the fact that I can now drag and drop audio from this means, hey, why not just drag it into a sampler? So I grab this clip real quick and let's uh, see if there's any decent information here that we can uh, uh, pull from it and throw into a sampler. So um, the top layer sounds kind of cool here, along with the uh, layer four. So like, all right, cool. Got rid of the bass stuff. And I'm going to drag it here. Let me just drag it into Serato Sample. If you don't, don't have this, I highly recommend it. it. I won't get into it right now. I should make another video, but it's great. And in this case, I'm just going to not chop it. I'm going to just use uh, a single uh, cue marker here and play it like an instrument. Now, I'm not going to make a masterpiece here, I promise you. But again, this is just a proof of concept. So knowing you can drag audio, we'll throw it other places than just the track, right? And of course, if you drowned it in reverb, everything sounds better, right? Okay, I think that's enough for now. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later. Bye.